Welcome to the NCW Life magazine. On this week's episode, we're taking a trip up to the Chelan School of Innovation, a pilot school empowering students through self-discovery and project-based learning. So my name is Alan Simmons, and I'm an advisor here at Chelan School of Innovation. So it kind of got started out of necessity for a different option. Um, the traditional alternative school was, um, they kind of started to get a really low graduation rate. So the district was looking for kind of a different option um, for kids that would provide them maybe more opportunity to graduate. Um, so it was kind of an idea of a lot of different people, um, including uh, the other advisor and principal, Eric. Um, they came up with it and it's based on big picture learning. So it's kind of based on that model and we've kind of taken it from there. It's really um, a student-based learning system where each student crafts an individualized learning plan and then they follow that plan kind of with the guidance of their advisor throughout the whole year. Um, and it's really um, heavily focused on project work and career-based kind of learning um, and really preparing students for kind of real-world applications and jobs. And so a lot of alternative programs traditionally have been kind of credit recovery where you'll see students just mainly all they do is take online coursework to recover those credits that they're behind in and be able to graduate. Um, but as you can imagine, engagement-wise, if you're just doing online classes and sitting on a computer all day long, like there's a lot of burnout and a lot of dropout rate. Um, so with the big picture model, students are a lot more engaged because they're designing their own learning plans and they're choosing those projects that they do. Um, so you know they kind of have a lot more buy-in than they would even in a regular school setting. The Chelan School of Innovation builds on and supports existing programs at the Lake Chelan School District while also relying on learning through internships and community outreach. So we're funded through the district. We're part, you know, we're still a public school. Um, and as far as credit wise, we actually have um, a credit waiver. So we don't have to operate on the same credit system that the high school operates on. Um, and that gives us a little leniency as far as like, um, you know, these guys aren't having to take you know, uh, say like four science credits, you know, traditional science classes in their time here, you know, they, they'll be doing plenty of science, but it won't be like a chemistry class, a biology class. It won't be like that. It'll be, you know, through, the, through their projects or internships. So it's a little different in that way. The projects brewing at CSI can vary from year to year as new students join the program. Alan says he's seen a wide variety of interests from students spanning from business to art. Ideally, the way they come here is through applying. So there's an application um, process and they can get those applications at the high school. And we do see the majority of students um, that we get do come directly from the high school. Um, but we do have some students from Manson. Um, we've had students from Arondo or students that are new to the area and just want a different kind of program. Um, but yeah, they start out filling out an application and then we usually have them come in and do kind of a shadow day with a student just to see if it kind of, if it's a fit for them. Um, and then after that, we, you know, we review the applications and then, um, yeah, they're admitted. So we get, you know, kids who maybe struggle a little bit academically at the main high school, just with the system of it, you know. Um, we get kids who, you know, maybe have had bullying problems, you know, been bullied at the high school and they want a smaller kind of family type environment, which is what we try to have here. Um, and then we get kids who, you know, they just, they want something different or they, they really know what their career is going to be and they want to just hone in on it. Um, so we get kids like that and this is a great place for them. So we've got people making uh, video games, we've got a group of students um, running a greenhouse and they're going to sell plants at Earth Day. We've obviously got the cold brew coffee going on. Um, we've got students doing, um, yeah, organic lip balm and organic soap. Um, there's all kinds of stuff, yeah, it kind of runs the gamut. Uh, so they design their projects and then we kind of try to help them incorporate like how does math fit into this project or how does science fit into this project and how can you explain that to us, you know, to show learning. So it's, it's a kind of a team effort between the advisor and the student, but they're the one coming up with the project in the beginning. As a student works through the program at CSI, they'll be in charge of finding their own internship opportunities as a junior or senior. So the juniors and seniors, we require them to do one internship per semester and some of them do multiple. Um, but that's kind of on them to figure out something that lines up with their career interests or their passion and you know we'll help them make that contact if need be but we like them to do as much of that legwork as as they can 
Um, and it, it really works out well to prepare them for kind of real world jobs and things. So like today, some students are out on their internships. Um, we try to have them do those Tuesdays and Thursdays, but some students do them different days. Um, and then, you know, during the week they're doing project work. They might be working on a couple online classes. They might be working on, you know, some writing. Um, but it's really a lot of individual work time um, where they have time to, you know, put in deep time into those projects. Um, so that's, that's the majority of their day, yeah. And we have some PE time at the end of the days. Um, and we get out on walks and get out and, you know, get out and about. Um, we also do a lot of community service. These guys all participate in community service, so that's a, that's a big piece, too, that we try to instill in them. We yeah. partner a lot with the Historic Downtown um, Association to do like the holiday lighting. We help them with put up all of that, take it all down. Um, we work a lot with the Senior Center um, and just help them if they need to move things or work in their gardens. Um, and just a lot of a lot of kind of little projects around town. Snow shoveling in the winter. These guys get out and shovel a bunch of driveways and sidewalks. It's pretty cool. For Alan, working with students at the Chelan School of Innovation fulfills his desire to help youth find their passions outside of a traditional school setting. So, I mean, kind of my passion going into education in the beginning was, um, I kind of knew from the beginning that I wanted to be in some sort of alternative setting because my high school experience was, I found it to be pretty boring and like I w didn't have very high engagement. So I wanted to work in a space that was different than that traditional space. Um, and just starting out um, as a teacher, you know, I worked in a traditional environment for a few years and just really realized how low the engagement level of the students was. So I kept trying to get further away from that and I worked in a Montessori school for a couple of years and that was a good step and then um, worked abroad and then ended up coming here and I think this is a really great fit. But I think it's just a real necessity to pr provide a more engaging environment for students. Um, and I think this does a pretty good job of it. Up next on this episode of the NCW Life magazine, we'll meet up with a senior at the Chelan School of Innovation, and later on, we'll talk with Dean of Students, Eric Peterson. Welcome back to this week's episode of the NCW Life magazine, as we're visiting the Chelan School of Innovation. Senior and Student Council President Ezekiel Bonavinos shares with us why he transferred to the program and what career goals he's working toward. I'm Ezekiel Bonavinos and we're at Chelan School of Innovation. I am Student Council President here and I'm glad to be here. Why did I join? There's not really a specific reason why I did it. It's just a mesh of different things. But the main reason that I'm still here is because there's a lot of different options available to me and since it's not super strict, I can do whatever I want and get the same amount of credit as I would in a normal high school. Uh, most of the time I'll be working on my laptop, working on uh, either my blog or setting up appointments for the school or myself uh, doing different uh, projects. So today I'm also going to be doing an interview with Cozy, talking about a fundraiser, which is CS at Cold Brew. Uh, I'll be again working on my blog and uh, do, uh, just checking emails, do all that stuff. It's not a certain specific blog, it's more just, uh, it's kind of like a digital uh, portfolio stuff that I do uh, throughout high school and that I've done this year. It's also got a digital resume on it, so if employers want to uh, look at what it looks like. Uh, I'm working for Thrive and I'm also interning for the uh, district counselor here in the Chelan School District. So I'm putting stuff like that and as long as uh, they're all okay since they're all pretty like private things. Uh, I can put it on my blog and mm, whoever wants to read it can. Ezekiel says his goals for his time at CSI include connecting with the community around him. Mostly just get, uh, getting to know more people in, uh, in our community and doing a lot more networking is that currently I'm kind of trying to do that so I'm trying to become uh, get my AA degree in business so getting all those connections going and getting help around uh, the community is kind of what I do. Making these connections and working toward his AA in business, Ezekiel shares where he hopes to take his career. Uh, opening my own f uh, financial company for um, a middle and lower class income families so to help them set up plans for uh, their own kids and help helping them 
be able to like pay stuff off easy, easier. So for college, it's a long-term kind of payment that they have to do. So helping them plan out what they want to do, and by the time that their student is 18, helping them uh, have plans out for uh, to how they're going to pay for college, as, uh, doing scholarships, maybe, and just insurance stuff. I'm very good at communication and uh, talking uh, uh, with other people and I did an internship with a f uh, financial planning company uh, last year and that just really got me going on this path. So this is a very recent thing. It's a requirement uh, here to graduate to be doing internships uh, for juniors and seniors and job shadows for uh, so freshmen and sophomores. So it's something that you are required to do and the fact that it's required gets you out into the to the community and not just here in Chelan, you can go out to Manson, Wenatchee, different places as long as you have a solid ship. He says the Chelan School of Innovation was a way to mix up his school experience in a fresh way while learning more about how to stay organized and making career connections. I just want to try something new. I've been doing this school thing for already four years, doing middle school and first year freshman year. Um, and I was like, if this is going to be the rest of high school, might as well try something new see what that's like, and then um, yeah, I was offered the chance to do it as well from Crosby Carpenter, which was last year's um, uh, principal here for CSI, and he was kind of one of the main people that got CSI or Shawn School Innovation started. It's the structure and the fact that it's a lot more relaxed than it would be over at the high school since I still have friends over at the high school and they're like, tell me how they're so busy, how they don't have any, uh, much time to uh, sometimes even go to work or do uh, other things. They, don't, they, don't, they can't do few, uh, trips to places they want to go or do like specific things to get a head start on things. And then I, I'm here and just like, I have time to do this, this, as long as I'm scheduled or organized myself since you kind of make your own learning plan and do things on, by your own accord. Career-wise, yeah, I, I do think that I have a, lot, a leg up on a lot of people. Uh, one thing I do kind of miss from the high school would be that you, most of the things are over there, like specifically told, so all opportunities that are available are told to you, but here you kind of have to seek them out, make sure that you have everything. While at CSI, Ezekiel helps manage and maintain the main fundraiser for the program. CSI Cold Brew began three years ago as a way to help fund field trips and student projects. And I've been kind of heading it up since last year, uh, making sure we got new pr uh, stuff. So uh, made the business plan for uh, to get a canner, and I've been working on marketing. And we got a website up, social media, and it's a work in progress, but. We're doing a lot better now, and it's a lot more professional now than it was definitely last year. So we're using Blue Star Coffee uh, to uh, make cold brew, which is just probably uh, simple terms, like really uh, slowly brewed coffee and over an extended period of time. And it, it comes out as a concentrate, but we make it ready to drink. And so people can have a can for $3. Uh, 10 for a four pack and 15 for a six pack. Just about anyone can order cold brew online. Uh, they put in place an order. They can't pay online yet. We're still working on that part, but yeah, um, they can uh, either email one of the teachers directly or order online. It goes back into the cold brew uh, to pay some for some stuff off. So like the canner that was extremely expensive, uh, especially since we're a small school, but. Uh, uh, all the extra money that we'll make off of that it goes to uh, helping us fund different things like field trips or uh, student projects that they might not have the money to do it for themselves. At the Chelan School of Innovation, Ezekiel says students will find unique challenges that will help propel their education in any direction they choose. Nothing's going to be handed to you specifically, so you're going to have to work for everything if you want to succeed here. And th there's definitely a lot of uh, trouble that sometimes we have with that. But overall, as long as uh, their student's hardworking and uh, is looking for new opportunities or a new way to do things, I think this would be it. Up next, Dean of Students Eric Peterson, one of the founding staff members at the Chelan School of Innovation. We'll be right back.
As we close out this episode of the NCW Life magazine with the Chelan School of Innovation, we visit with Eric Peterson, an advisor and dean of students at the Pilot School. My name is Eric Peterson. I'm an advisor and the dean of students here at Chelan School of Innovation. Yep, I've been here since the beginning. Uh, we're on our fourth year, going strong. So one day the superintendent came to me and asked if I'd like to try something different. Uh, I've been an English teacher for 25 years and I, I said yeah um, and he explained to me that what they were doing was revamping the alternative school uh, because it was not really serving kids the way it could and so we adopted the big picture learning model and our, our own version of it really. Well the goal is to put kids in the driver's seat in a, a personalized learning model like ours um, much of what they do is based on who they are and what they want to do and what their interests are. And beyond that, we require them to do internships and work with mentors in the community to uh, help give them some real world skills and applications. There, there's also, you know, some fundamental literacy and math curriculum that we have them do. And, um, a lot of community building and experiencing things together to learn those soft skills that are important for life in the workplace. You know. The big picture learning model is an idea popping up globally, Eric says, and is something that can be molded to fit different communities and schools. CSI is part of the big picture learning network and it's a movement that's taking off worldwide. There are big picture schools as far away as Kenya, New Zealand, and all over Europe springing up. Um, and I think the basic premise is that when you put kids in charge of their learning, uh, they're motivated to do some authentic work and you know, chart their destiny in an authentic way. And the network provides a lot of support for us as teachers uh, coming up with new ideas. Um, it's not like a single model that everybody does the same. Everyone's got their own version of big picture. But some of the key components remain the same, like projects, internships, exhibitions, um, and stuff like that. With a wide variety of projects, how does CSI work with each student to find their interests? We have a lot of interest exploration activities and career exploration tools that we do. One of them is called Find Your Grind, and that's an online program sponsored by the pro skater Mike Smith, who's come to our school a couple times. And so the kids really hook on to his message of getting to know yourself and being, you know, authentic and uh, who you are and where you're going and what your interests are. Here's a quick clip from Find Your Grind with teachers sharing their thoughts on the curriculum. And helping them find where it is that they want to go. I believe, first and foremost, we are supposed to create happy human beings, not just readers and writers and mathematicians, but we want our kids to be fulfilled. One of the big things for us was kids aren't engaged because they don't really know their passion and they don't really know their path. This program, Find Your Grind, was going to help them have an honest conversation about where they would like their lives to go. The depth of it was phenomenal to see where their values came out. It allowed us to have like a platform to go off of to then talk even deeper. As a classroom community, we became closer. It was one of those moments you go home and you're excited as a teacher because you saw the kids connecting and like understanding other perspectives besides their own. I did take the lifestyle assessment um, and it was pretty accurate. I, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, it's pretty like easy and straightforward. The lifestyle quiz was really accurate and it really helped. You know, our students all do internships, but it's hard sometimes to expose them to those, you know, all the careers that are available. So I think Find Your Grind is really um, a great tool for doing that. With learning structures like Big Picture and Find Your Grind, Eric shares more of the differences between a traditional classroom and the setting at CSI. Most every kid here in this school genuinely loves coming to school. Another difference is that our learning model is not prescriptive. Uh, there's more time to use that creative part of the brain and that interactive part of the brain. And their day isn't regimented by bells and instructions and assignments and due dates. 
so much as in a traditional setting. They get a lot more freedom to explore interests and uh, design projects that are related to those interests. For those who are creative artistic types, and we've got quite a few this year, obviously the, the chemistry changes with each new cohort of students. Um, this year we also have a lot of kids really interested in technology and video game design and so we try to provide opportunities for those kids. The atmosphere at the Chelan School of Innovation can be very collaborative. It's uh, a pretty complex process um, following our slogan of one kid at a time. Um, but some of our day is pretty structured. In the morning we start out in a restorative circle and we share and discuss ideas, talk about school related issues. Then we'll move into some academic time where students are doing reading comprehension quizzes or math online. And then we'll move into the second part of our day which is basically projects and community service and internship type work. Um, and it, that's really my time to move around and check in with each kid and support them with their, their work. Eric says a few of the projects that come through the doors of the school inspire and surprise him. Our first year, a um, couple students were interested in bicycles and bike repair. And so we actually ended up connecting with a community member who ran a bike shop and he ended up um, turning his business over to the school and donating all his tools and mentoring the kids on how to run a business. And so what the students did was they would fix bikes in the community and give them to kids. So it was pretty cool. It had a kind of philanthropic uh, aspect to it too. With the motto of learning by doing, the Chelan School of Innovation is always looking for new partnerships with community members and organizations for their students. Yeah, we're always trying to recruit mentors and people with specific skill sets or you know, career experience so that we can offer kids new and exciting opportunities to get their hands dirty and see, you know, sometimes a student will go on an internship and decide, I don't really like this type of work. Um, maybe I'll change my focus. So whether it's, uh, you know, it depends on the student's experience. Uh, so we're always trying to recruit mentors and um, give us a call, email us. Normally people will fill out a student uh, volunteer packet through the district office. To get in touch with the Chelan School of Innovation, call 509-888-8773 or visit their Facebook page. Do you have a magazine idea? Contact me, Caitlin Hedersheet, by emailing caitlin at ncwlife.com.